so you want to know more about nitrification. Hey, what is going on friends? Welcome back to another video. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Ashley and I make new fish videos every single week. So remember to smash the subscribe button and come join the family. Alright, so today it's classroom time with the SG Bearded Aquarius. So you want to know what nitrification is and that is one of the most important things in this hobby in fact it's important to all of life on earth so the nitrification process is something that happens everywhere and is essential to life but when it comes to our aquariums it is particularly important and I'll explain to you why so first we need to go through what is the nitrification process why is it important and how does it happen all right so the nitrification process is the turning of ammonia which is a toxic compound that is poisonous to our fish to nitrates which is a less toxic compound it's still a nitrogen compound but it is less toxic and our fish can tolerate low levels of it all right so that's the summary of what it is now you need to understand why it is important so when we talk strictly about our aquariums um, the inhabitants whether it's a turtle or fish they produce waste okay and fishes release ammonia or should I say excrete ammonia through their gills and also they pass waste which as it decompose then it release ammonia and so ammonia is toxic to fishes and if we don't get rid of the ammonia then our fish would die of ammonia poisoning which is why a lot of new hobbyists always lose fish and give up in this hobby and think that this is very hard it is not actually very hard all we have to do is know how to get the nitrification process going and then our fish will live happily so the first thing we have to understand is that our aquariums are closed systems meaning that when they produce ammonia inside it's stuck inside right either we get rid of it by taking it out which we cannot possibly do every single minute and day instead we need to depend on the nitrification process that will turn the toxic ammonia into a eventual product of nitrate. So this is the nitrification process. Um, if we talk about ecosystems in real life, it actually is a nitrogen cycle, which I'm not covering today, but just know that we are only talking about this segment. Um, when we talk about nitrates, it's not actually the end, and when we talk about ammonia, it's not actually the start when we talk about a nitrogen cycle. But here in the aquarium, we focus only on the nitrification process and yeah. So we start, as you can see, fishes swimming around when you feed them, especially when you put food inside, they produce waste when they assimilate proteins that have nitrogen in them, they produce ammonia. Now for fishes, what a lot of people don't know is that actually a lot of the ammonia is excreted through the gills and it is excreted through the waste as well. So. When they produce this, we need to get rid of it. How does this happen? Nitrification cycle. We have what we call nitrifying bacteria. So when I talked about ammonia to nitrate, that was the big summary. It's actually a two-step process. Ammonia is first converted into nitrite with an I. Now this happens through nitrification bacteria that converts and oxidizes ammonia into nitrite. Now nitrate is a less toxic compound than ammonia but it is still more toxic than nitrate. So what happens next? You need to convert it one more time. So nitrite will be converted by a different bacteria but it's still considered a nitrifying bacteria into nitrate and that will be the final product in our aquariums or for most of our aquariums and that's where we have to conduct our water changes to get rid of it. So. That is a summary of what it is and how it works. Now the big question is, if it's that simple, why are fishes dying? Now, what we need to understand is that nitrifying bacteria, the bacteria that converted ammonia into nitrite into nitrate, is what we call omnipresent, as with all bacteria, and basically they exist basically everywhere. But the problem is they don't exist in sufficient amounts. And so when you start a new aquarium, there is insufficient amount to handle the amount of waste that a fish will produce. 
So what we do, we need to cycle what we call cycle the aquarium and uh, I don't want to go into detail of that but basically when you cycle an aquarium, you are getting the bacteria to multiply. Now you have to know that there are certain conditions for the bacteria to live and multiply. Um, one of them is surface area. They need they live on surface areas, so decorations and you know media in your filter. Um, and if you don't know what media is, basically sponges, anything that provides surface area within your filter, and your filter has to be flowing, of course, will help bacteria um, multiply. Now, if your tank is empty with no decorations and no filter, then your surface area is restricted to only the four glass panels. And if you wipe down those glass panels on top of that then basically you have no bacteria no surface area for your bacteria to live so surface area is very important but that's not the only condition the next condition is ammonia so as i said so as I, so as you know the bacteria thrives on ammonia and while we see it as doing a job for us what it's actually doing is that it's using it as food so it's using it as food to grow and multiply so we need an ammonia source in order to grow this bacteria and preferably the ammonia source not be from fish because then there will be insufficient bacteria to handle it so usually what we do when we cycle aquariums is that we put uh, we find a way to put in ammonia into the tank be it through directly um, pouring ammonia inside a source of ammonia inside or we let you know some people will put food inside and let it decompose and then it releases ammonia and the bacteria will thrive. The last and the last important condition for the bacteria to live in there and multiply is oxygen. We need to dissolve oxygen because nitrifying bacteria is what we call aerobic bacteria. So aerobic bacteria, they need oxygen to survive and multiply. And so, um, without, again, without going into details about how the different ways you can do it, um, one simple way to get oxygen into the tank is through water surface agitation and that you can use either through a pump or an aerator or what we call an air stone. Alright, so it's important to know that ammonia has to be zero at all times and we usually we measure it in ppm, parts per million. So it has to be zero at all time, nitrites has to be zero at all time and nitric has to be low usually depending on fishes um, some people will say 20 you can go to 40 but i'll say that's a very debatable topic um, i've heard of you know ecosystems in a while where actually if you test nitrates it's almost 500 so this is something that i think is very debatable but as a rule of thumb keep it around 40 at, at the most and then we'll go down so when i give these figures how do we know our ammonia level or nitrate level in the tank so basically um, if you go to aquariums, they will sell test kits. Now, I use API test kits. I do trust API. I'm not sponsored, not even close. And uh, yeah, basically you can use any test kits you prefer. Um, there and they come. You can test them in different ways, right? Okay, all the fishes are getting excited because they think this is food. You can get this at just about any aquariums, and there are different ways. We come up with different products basically for me i use solutions and test tubes so i literally take water out in a test tube and then i follow the instructions um it's quite simple so i won't be going into that the alternative is they sometimes they sell test strips so you just take the strip and you just dip it into the water that is a much more convenient way to do testing but the drawbacks are two things one is um, it's said to be less accurate now i don't think that's a big problem but just know that um, and the other thing is it's more costly so this is a lot more cost efficient when you use test tubes so um, if you're like me and you don't want to buy all three because it can be really costly basically what I do is I buy ammonia and I buy nitrate so I don't have a nitrite test kit and well if you're gonna do it the proper way I guess I should be telling you to get all three but I'm a practical guy and I don't just want to say the right thing, I want to say something that people will follow. So, if you're only going to get one, it's a hard choice. Long term wise, I'll say nitrate because ammonia is quite easy to keep down. But if you're really new to the hobby, you might need this. So, if you're new to the hobby, I will recommend ammonia. Get ammonia and make sure your ammonia is zero at all times. Now, 
if you're gonna get two, you get, get ammonia and nitrate. And the reason for that is because I don't need to measure my nitrite if I know my nitrates are going up. So I make sure that my ammonia goes to zero. So I know that there's bacteria converting it and it's zero. And as I watch my nitrate climb, I know that my nitrate is being converted into nitrate. And so I know it's not the most effective way, but usually this um, looking at the way it climbs, the nitrate climbs and how ammonia is zero, you should be in the clear. Of course, if you want to be super safe, then yes, get a nitrite and test it. But I never used it before and I never had a problem. Now, if you see your ammonia always at zero and you have fishes living inside and your nitrate is at zero as well, then you know that, okay, there is a slight problem because it means that ammonia has been converted into nitrite but the nitrate is not coming out to nitrate now it doesn't mean that just because you have nitrate being produced it means that it means that you have no nitrite it just suggests that the conversion is there and in general you should be safe all right so how do we handle nitrate in the aquarium so as i've said aquariums are closed systems and for most beginner hobbyists we won't be doing um, advanced things like using plants or denitrifying bacteria. Let's not go into all of that. The most basic way we do this is through water changes. And with water changes, basically we always do partial water changes and what we are removing is the nitrate. Now, you don't actually have to test your nitrate before and after you do a water change. You can do it either or. But basically just know that if you change 50% of the water, then if your water is well circulated using pumps, and everything is even then you will be left with 50% of the nitrate so if you had 40 and you do a 50% water change then you will be left with 20 parts per million all right so just to recap nitrification process we take ammonia we turn it into nitrite and then we turn it into nitrate this is done through nitrifying bacteria that has certain conditions that they need to live in now in a new aquarium you don't have enough of this nitrifying bacteria so you need to cycle the aquarium to get enough eventually you end up with a lot of nitrate and we lower that through water changes so with that your fishes will live happily unless they die for some other cause all right class is dismissed now let's have some fun you want to see some feeding i want to see some feeding let's get you guys a good view on all of this soon and it's still my busy period so I'll be editing this video well for sure I promise you guys that come next month May lots of content is coming in fact I have so much content I sometimes I'm just I get stuck because there's, there's so many things I want to do and everything is like half planned and I need to get myself to like settle down and like okay I'm gonna do this video this week something like that and as always, I appreciate all of you guys dropping by. Um, if you guys already knew the nitrification process and you um, hung around, then thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, if I missed anything out, I know there's a lot of experienced viewers out there. Go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me let the viewers know anything that I might have missed out or I would say I got anything wrong, but. Just in case I got anything a little, the technicality is a little bit off, go ahead, correct me. Sometimes, you know, you're supposed to use this word, but you use that. Uh, oh, and a lot of people have been asking me, like, what is that white fish? What is that white fish? Now, I did a video when I got it. I'll put the card on the top right hand corner of the screen. But, let me just cover in this video because a lot of people will probably say, oh, what is that white fish?
So that white fish at the back. Let's wait for him to come out. Alright, so that white fish over there. That is Snowy. It's called Snowy. But uh, his common name, his common trade name in the industry is Jelly Bean Convict. And apparently, it is a short body pink convict cichlid. That's what it is. So it's not a hybrid. It is just a genetic variation of the convict cichlid. And we have two genetic variations. Not, not only is it a pink convict, it is a short body pink convict. Now that is the general consensus. I think um, a lot of people are still, you know, discussing what it really is. But yeah, he's really cute. Little snowy living in the tank. Alright, so I know a lot of you guys like my um, adventure videos where I go do store tour and go out there and explore stuff. Lots of that to come in the coming months. I promise you guys um, more hobbies will be featured, more store tours and uh, maybe some really, really special stuff coming. So I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on your post notifications so you get notified every time I upload. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next video. Beard out.